Hi everyone, my name is Greta. I'm a sales engineer at Fivetran, and today I'm going to walk you through how to set up an Oracle database as a connector within Fivetran. We'll start on the homepage of the Fivetran UI here, where you'll see a list of all of my existing connectors or data sources. In order to add a new one, I'm going to go to this Add Connector button at the top right, select a destination, which is where data from my Oracle database is going to be written, and search for Oracle within the list of 5chan data sources. You'll notice that we have different flavors of Oracle available here, and this is to make sure that we're able to accommodate various data volumes and latency requirements. For today's demo specifically, I'm going to be setting up an Oracle RDS instance. So this brings me to the setup form over here. If you've already set up a connector or destination within Fivetran, you'll notice that all of our setup forms have a similar format. On the left here, you see a few fields related to the data source that we ask you for. And on the right, there is a list of prerequisites followed by very detailed setup instructions to help you with the fields that we ask for on the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill out these fields on the left here. I have the database host first, followed by the port. Next, I'm going to be using a user that I've created specifically for 5chan within my database. And this user has read-only access to the database. We also need the SID for your database. And then you'll be able to choose a connection method. For Oracle, we support a variety of different connection methods, including connecting via an SSH tunnel or using private networking. I'm going to elect to connect directly over here via IP whitelisting. And at the bottom of the setup form, we have listed all of the relevant IP addresses or CIDR blocks that need to be whitelisted. So you can simply copy this to your clipboard in order to create that firewall role. Next, we'll need to decide what sort of update method we want in order to be able to read incremental changes from the Oracle database. The first is reading changes via Oracle's log miner utility. And the second here is detecting changes via 5chan teleport sync. And 5chan teleport sync is essentially smart snapshot replication that will allow us to detect incremental updates without necessarily enabling supplemental logging. If you would like decide to choose Teleport Sync, I would recommend reading through our documentation to make sure that your database meets all of the requirements. I'm going to select LogMiner for this demo. So now that we have all of the fields on the left filled out, I'll walk through some of the information that's here on the right. Starting with step one in the setup instructions, we have additional details about each connection method to help inform your decision around which one to choose. Step two is specific to enabling database access within AWS. Steps three and four contain specific instructions around creating a user for Fivetran's use and the specific permissions that are needed by the user. And the great thing about this part here is that we have pre-written scripts that you can simply copy and paste into your database to ensure that the necessary permissions are granted. Moving on to step five here, we also include scripts that need to be run in order for the incremental update mechanism to be set up. So specifically for LogMiner, you can simply copy and paste these scripts into your database to make sure that we're enabling redo log retention, enabling archive log mode, and supplemental logging on the database. As mentioned earlier for teleport, no additional logging needs to be enabled. However, 
recommend that you read through our documentation here for specific requirements to be able to use Teleport Sync. And with that, I'm going to save and test the connection. At this stage, Fivetran is going to run through a series of setup tests to make sure that we're able to do things like connect to the database, validating the TLS certificate, which happens here when I choose to connect directly. We'll also check for things like the database version, checking for archive log access and the archive log retention period, and also checking to make sure that supplemental logging is enabled on the database. And now that all of our connection tests have passed, I'm going to click continue. At this point, Fivetran is fetching all of the relevant schema st structure information. So this is something that we automatically detect, starting with the schema, the underlying tables, as well as the underlying columns within each table. In this page specifically, you are given the option to decide which schemas and tables you would like to sync. So I'm going to only focus on this Animal Crossing schema here. And if I don't need specific tables, I can simply deselect them by unchecking the box here. The same thing goes for the underlying columns within each table. If I know that I don't need to sync all of them, I can just quickly deselect by unchecking the columns here. I know that some of my columns contain sensitive data, including this number of tiers column. So I will use Fivetran's option to hash the data so that it's masked when it lands in my destination. And once all of these schema, table, and column selection looks good, I will click Save and Continue here. Next, you'll be given the option to tell Fivetran how you want us to handle schema changes. Talking through the three options that are available here, the first one, allowing all, means that any new schemas, tables, and columns that are added to the data source will automatically be detected and written into your destination. The second option here, allow columns, means that new schema changes will automatically be, be detected. However, only new columns will automatically be written into your destination. When new schemas and tables are detected, they will first appear in the schema selection tab for you to approve before Fivetran writes them to your destination. The last option that we have, block all, means that any new schemas, tables, and columns will be detected. However, they will not automatically be written into your destination. They will first appear in the schema tab for you to view and approve by checking the box next to each one before Fivetran writes them to your destination. I'm going to select allow all and we'll continue with the setup here. So the next step here is to start the initial sync. When Fivetran syncs data from a data source, the sync happens in two phases. The first phase, called the initial sync, is a big historical sync of all data that already exists within the data source. And the second phase is doing change data capture, or capturing all of the incremental changes that have happened since the last sync. I'm going to set this part up now by going to the Setup tab over here. And I know that after the historical sync completes, I would like Fivetran to write incremental changes into my destination once every hour. And this concludes the one-time setup that's required to get Oracle data moving from my Oracle database into the destination. From here on out, I can just sit back, relax, and do some periodic monitoring here in the connection dashboard while Fivetran syncs my incremental updates once every hour as configured here. So I can do this monitoring in a couple of different ways. I'll start in the status tab over here in my Oracle dashboard, 
this tab gives me a high level overview of how syncs have been going, any actions that have occurred within the connector, whether that be to update the sync frequency or to change the schema as well. The second way I can do some monitoring is going to the logs tab over here. This tab contains a very detailed history of all of the queries that we run on the data source in order to be able to read the data. Once we start writing data into the destination, this logs tab will also give you information on when each sync started, when it ended, how many records were modified, etc. If I ever decide that I need additional tables or columns that I didn't select the first time around, I can always go back to the schema tab here and select additional ones and save changes appear at the top right. Same thing goes for the sync frequency. If my needs end up changing and I don't want data to be synced once every hour, I can move over to the setup tab here and change that to once every two hours instead. And that concludes the demo for setting up Oracle as a data source within 5chan.